Now, I said um, I'll be taking your calls, but we've got one listener who I'm going to take straight away, and I'm sure you'll be delighted he's joined me. I'm very pleased to say Richard Tice is on the line, leader of the Reform Party. Richard, hello. Nick, a very good afternoon. Well, obviously, I was enjoying listening to your show, as always. Well, that's delightful to hear. <laughs> and, and a couple of questions came up, and I thought, well, I could probably answer them quite quickly. Well, I think that's great. Now, one of them, I'm sure um, you will be aware, is that I've been asking, and indeed Henry Bolton raised it as well with us, uh, as to your key uh, policy, which is to stop the boats, I think what people are trying to interrogate and understand, as you grow in popularity, you'll get more of these questions, is exactly how will you do that? Yeah, and it's a great question. We've got a clear six-point plan, the first of which is you've got to leave the ECHR. And, and this is an overall policy. Uh, you've got to have uh, offshore processing centres, but you have them in British overseas territories, not in Rwanda. Um, we've got to make it clear that no one who comes to the UK illegally in the UK. Sorry, Richard, just say that again. You broke up. What was your third Sorry, one? Um, the third one is that if someone who leaves into the UK will not be allowed to uh, settle in the UK, yep. so will not be granted asylum. And then you've also got to have a whole new uh, Department of Immigration. The Home Office is not fit for purpose. I think everybody accepts that. Richard, I knew this was going to happen. We've lost you again. We've got to your fourth point. Uh, get, let's give it one more go, otherwise we'll try and call you back. Uh, fine. So you, you've got the four, fourth point about yep. the, uh, a new Department of Immigration. And then the key point is also that we will pick up and take back to France, which we are legally entitled to do under two international treaties. The 1974 Safety of Life at Sea Treaty and the 1982 UN Convention on the Law of Sea. I've read those treaties. I know exactly which clauses. What is required is something that neither the main two parties have got. It is courageous political will and real leadership. So you saw in Australia exactly 10 years ago, they did the same thing and the boat stopped within a matter of weeks. And I've run this policy by a former head of what was called Operation Sovereign Borders in Australia, who agree that it's exactly the right strategy, uh, but it requires leadership. And that's what you do. We're legally entitled to do it. There's nothing France can do about it. It's within international law. Let, now, let me just press you on a couple of points there. Uh, you won't be surprised. There's quite a few of those I could easily support. Uh, but let me press you, first of all, on uh, the idea of uh, the Australian one being successful. There was a key difference there. They were taking them to places, uh, to, to effectively islands that were as close as Jersey, but were Australian territory. Surely one of the problems you may find is that the French simply refuse to allow you to dock to take these people back. So you would have to strike an agreement to do that, wouldn't you? And that's not going to be that likely, given some of the French difficulties. <laughs> They, they legally cannot stop us under international treaty. They can try and sue us. That'll take them a year. They're not going to shoot us, so they're going to do a deal with us. It is as simple as that. And I've always said you've got to have joint processing centres in northern France. You process people jointly within a fortnight. They get a week to have an appeal, and then they get deported from where they came if the appeal is rejected. At that point, the magnet effect stops, because what's happening at the moment is there is a huge magnet through France to the UK because everybody knows the UK is the most generous and colonization. We've allowed a tripling over the last. R Richard, I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm I'm going to I'm going to uh, press uh, press on because we are uh, maybe maybe stand still or clutch a coat hanger or something because you were just breaking breaking up there. You mentioned your third one. Um, it's actually uh, making claiming asylum if you enter this country illegal. That's actually what the bill did in the summer that the government have done. Are you saying that's not good enough and there's something wrong with that bill? Uh, no, that element of it is, is, is good and is correct, but of course they haven't done the other elements and therefore it's irrelevant in its isolation. Within the context of our overall plan, it all, hangs, it all hangs together, it all works together. But the key element is the moment that the illegal migrants realise they're going to be picked up and taken back, the whole business model is finished. It's over. Now, that's, the difference with the law is critical. Occasionally, 
people do still come through uh, in the lorries, and that's actually how the Albanians are now continuing to come yep. into the UK. It's easy to forget the other routes, of course, that, it's easy that, that are happening. The other routes. So that's why these other parts can pick up and take that policy are absolutely critical to this. <laughs> Richard, I, I, despite this line, I hope, I hope you feel I'm giving you as fair a hearing as possible, but I, you know what my next question is going to be. Uh, Nigel Farage might even emerge as a winner tonight um, and, and actually win a vote, uh, a national vote, in um, uh, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. He's going to come out and find a very different landscape politically on the question of immigration and the state of the Conservative Party uh, than when he went in. Are you going to actively encourage him to join your party and take a leadership role? Uh, Nick, um, he's already been president and been saying actively in the papers and on the media in recent weeks, of course, uh, this is so frustrating. Uh, we're gonna... I'm going to try and move. Yeah, oh, wherever you were then, I heard that. So <laughs> I'm going to try and um, I know you heard the question, and I, I was beginning to hear your answer. I do want to press you, though, on the point of difference to my question is, would you actively solicit and encourage him to come back? Absolutely. I've been saying that to all the journalists and broadcasters who've been asking that I'm actively encouraging and hoping that he will be able to uh, give as much time and effort as, uh, as he can, because the whole landscape now has moved on to his natural turf of immigration. And he will be delighted at the poll rating that we've secured, and, but he will equally be furious with what's happened with uh, immigration, both lawful and unlawful, and the complete betrayal of the Conservative Party. So I'm saying, uh, you know, Nigel, your country needs you. Come back and help reform, transform uh, the state of uh, British politics and the next election, whether the main two parties like it or not, Nick, the next election will be an immigration election. That I can guarantee. I'm therefore going to uh, just put it to you one final point, if I may. The Rwanda bill going through Parliament, which is currently appears to have the Conservative Party in complete disarray and divided about it, would you actually encourage Conservative MPs to nevertheless back this bill, let it go to the House of Lords maybe, where I think we all know it will be rejected, and then encourage Rishi Sunak to call an immigration election? Yeah, I would say that as a Conservative, I think the whole world has been a complete effort to distract this on an effort and money. And Richard, I'm afraid we're going to have to call it a day. And, and there's going to be conspiracy theorists out there who think I've cut you off. I, I'm, I'm absolutely uh, delighted that uh, Richard keeps listening to the programme. We lost him earlier, uh, and he's very, very welcome back. Richard, um, uh, time's up against me, as you know how these things work, but I, I'm glad you're on the line. Uh, what would you like to, what, where, would you, where would you like to finish the point you were trying to make? Hopefully we get a better signal, Nick. But the second question that you asked was whether we've got the infrastructure to stand 630 candidates I, in England. Scotland, I didn't. Right? I asked that of someone else, actually. That's that was right, George Pascoe George, Watson. Right. Yes. And and uh, he cast considerable doubt on it. Let me reassure you, we've already got 420. If anybody goes to our website, you can see their names on the website. They've already been allocated. We've got hundreds more applying and being interviewed and vetted. We will have the candidates. Do you that. know what that says, says to me? And thank you for clarifying that. And it's very clear. Do you know what that says to me, though, um, uh, Richard? Be given that I think it's probably agreed the largest share of the vote that you will attract will come from Conservatives. Not exclusive, I accept that, will come from Conservatives. That, and that, given the scale of what you're doing, are you more about just finishing off the Conservatives rather than actually being able to secure uh, an influential small group of MPs from reform in the House of Commons, which could actually have far greater impact than perhaps fighting 650 seats and not, on current polling, winning any one of them? A first pass the post is difficult. It's 630. We don't stand in Northern Ireland. But look, politics is a medium-term game. 
But I want people to vote positively for what they believe and not what they're afraid of. And the two main parties are two variants of socialism, high tax, high regulation, pro net zero, nanny state, all of which leads to low growth and a catastrophe for a great nation. And people deserve a better choice. Richard, listen, for time reasons only, I'm very pleased you were able to finish on a couple of points. Thanks very much indeed for joining me.